Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making the Spencer Og composition notebook pattern. So let's get right into it. So basically you'll see that I have already cut out all of the pieces according to the pattern. And what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and cut, you can use the pattern pieces or you can cut according to the chart. I just used the chart and um, went ahead and cut out all of my pieces. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and fuse everything to my pattern pieces. Now, as you can see, I am actually using a woven interfacing um, or woven fuse, I think is the name of it. I'm going to be using that on my spine and the outer edges of the main piece piece um, for my pattern and then I am going to be using some Decoville light for the middle part of my main piece. I really liked the way that this felt. Decoville light is one of my favorite interfacings to use and then I also really really love the woven fuse because it gives just kind of that extra oomph. Now, if you'll notice, I am actually using a vinyl for my spine. This vinyl is actually not a very thick vinyl, so I felt like putting some of the woven fuse on this would actually help to give it a little bit of a stiffness. So really quick, I wanted to tell you guys, one of the main things that I saw people commenting on in the Spencer Og group was for those who were using vinyl on the spine, how do you get the fold to stay? Um, how do you keep it in place? So I'm going to show you my tip here. I actually really, really love using double-sided sticky tape. And you can pick this up from Waywack or Wawack. I'm not really sure how you say it, but as you can see, I'm going to be using this just around the edges and I'm just going to fold it over and that made it really really easy to keep it folded and to keep it in place. Now I am not going to be using that double sided sticky tape on the main part of my fabric just to create that fold to keep it in place. I am also not going to be using pins down the, the spine of the um, of this vinyl because I don't want for it to poke holes in it. But if you feel like you can, or if you're using a fabric rather than vinyl, then feel free to put pins in as the tutorial tells you to. But for me, I am just going to use four clips and you'll see that when we start to sew. And that is actually going to be um, perfect for me. I didn't have any issues with it moving. And so that was perfect. Now, the other option that you can use is you can actually use some fabric fix. I am using the Beacon Fabric Fix on this particular vinyl. Now, I will say that it does take a little bit more time for it to dry. So if you're in a hurry, that double-sided sticky tape is definitely going to be your best bet. I don't have problems with the double-sided sticky tape tape gumming up my needle but if you do then definitely just use the adhesive that you need to hold this vinyl down just to help you sew you know sew through it so it doesn't move and to give you that smooth finish All right guys, so I do wanna know here that according to the pattern, we are going to be basically using a 5 8 seam allowance throughout the pattern, except for when we are sewing up the seam on our outer fabric and on our lining fabric. So 
in those instances, we are going to be using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So on the outer edges of the outer fabric and on the outer edges of the lining fabric and also when we are sewing across the top to tack those outer edges down or outer flaps down, that's when we're going to use the 3 8 seam allowance. Guys, I do want to note that in the pattern, it states for you to zigzag the edges of the main or the outer piece. I keep saying the main piece, but it's the outer piece and the lining. But I went ahead and gave them a quick serge, but you can do the zigzag if you do not have a serger. Alright, so as you can see here, we are going to go ahead and sew down our spine. Um, also, as you can see, I did not use the pins as noted before, but I did just use two clips on both ends of the spine. We do want to try to get as close as possible to the edge just to give this a really, really crisp finished look. And sorry guys, I went out of focus just a bit, but I did want to try to get as close as possible to this piece so that you can see every single thing that I'm doing. Alright, so now we are going to tack down our ribbon. Now, I am going to say that I am one of those people that I want to make sure that things do not move. So, I am going to go over my ribbon quite a few times, just, you know, moving forward and then back stitching, just to make sure that it's tacked down really well, as I know that we'll be, you know, I'll be pulling at this quite a bit. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and turn our seams or our outer edge up towards the spine. And we're gonna go ahead and tack down on a, either end of it, just so that it doesn't move. We are not going to um, go straight across it just yet, but we're just going to go on either side of the spine and make sure that our outer flaps, I guess that's a better word for it, <laughs> are sewn down. So at this point, we are going to go ahead and pin our lining to our outer piece. Guys, we are almost done. This is so exciting. Um, we're going to go ahead and sew, of course, 5 8 seam allowance as close as we can possibly get to the, um, the interfacing, which 
you know, I am actually leaving just a little bit of space just to be safe. We don't want to sew over the interfacing, but we want to get as close as we can. And like I said, at this point, we are going to sew all the way through all layers. Now, you will see that I did not tuck my ribbon in as the pattern stated, but that's okay. I got to it before I... <laughs> <laughs> sewed it down. So make sure that before you start sewing, you go ahead and tuck that ribbon in. It'll just make it a little bit easier for you so that you don't have to do it while you're trying to sew. Um, and again, if you prefer to use pins here, I am just using clips. I don't really like using pins um, because I've had an experience with them that I never want to have again. But anyway, just make sure that you're sewing this down 5 8 seam allowance and as close to the interfacing as possible. All right, guys, so we are on our final step. Well, final step if you choose not to iron it down or press it a bit, but final step for this video tutorial, we are going to go ahead and turn our book co cover right sides out. So you just basically want to push this through. Um, and then what you're gonna notice here is that I am going to go ahead and give this, um, try, just take a, just a little paint stick or um, paint brush that I have that I use to poke corners out and you just want to get in there and just poke those corners out and make sure that everything's turned out correctly and that it looks good and clean and finished. Now I did not press this down on camera but I did go ahead and press this down um, using my steam press at the end or after this. I did want to go ahead and protect my vinyl but if you do not have vinyl then you shouldn't have any problems with just using an iron to go over it but you know whatever works for you. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, really quick video just showing you my method of making the Spencer Og composition book cover pattern. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll give this video a thumbs up. Hopefully you'll subscribe and then share it and invite your friends. Until next time, thanks guys. Bye.